Good morning. I, I guess I mean, most of them are different locations. So, so well, let me introduce myself. Uh, uh, this is Raj, uh, Tableau trainer. So, uh, let me introduce myself. I hold around uh, 12 years of experience completely into uh, business intelligence. Uh, been working with uh, uh, different customers like uh, GE, GSK, BASF, Hershey's. So, Fortune 500 customers. So out of my 12 years of experience, I was in around uh, 6 plus years completely into, you know, uh, Cognos uh, tool being worked with and um, re recently last three and a half years, I was being associated with uh, Tableau training, Tableau, Tableau. So this is about my, uh, you know, technical background. Uh, well, so today's session, let us discuss in detail uh, what exactly is a data warehouse, what are all the different, uh, you know, ETL and business intelligence tools. And why really in the in the real environment companies were uh, you know uh, using these um, ETL and business intelligence tools, and how Tableau is quite different with other BA tools about the market and whatever topics I'm going to cover in the going forward sessions. So you can you know let us discuss in detail on that uh, in detail on that. So well, uh, let us discuss this. What is data warehouse? Why data warehouse? what are all the different ETL and business intelligence tools. Well, so basically a warehouse, what, what was the meaning of warehouse? So warehouse is nothing but in a mass way we can tell that it was a godown, right? So if I store something, a rice in a warehouse, so that is called as a, a rice warehouse. If I store something, you know, wheat in a warehouse, that is called as a wheat warehouse. Same way, if I store data in a warehouse, that is called as a data warehouse. So what is the necessity for organizations to store data in a data warehouse? What was the main purpose? So means, uh, let me just share you a simple example so that you'll understand why organizations were storing all the historical data. So let, let us uh, assume that in south region of a country, I mean, I take India, uh, south region of India, I started a business. So the company name was ABC and it deals, I mean any organization or any business, it has to deal with a product. So here I deal with FMCG, fast moving consumer goods, I mean daily usage product. Okay, so I, I go with the daily usage products, all the grocery stores, something comes under FMCG. So to capture all these transactions, because I should capture all the transactions, so a data source is mandatory for me. If I want to capture the data, I need a data source. So as you know, we have different types of data sources. Okay, a databases is one of the source, Hadoop, Excel. Okay, there's different you know, sources we have. So here in my business, I'm going with a database, Oracle database. Okay, to capture all the transactional data, I was going with the, uh, you know, this Oracle database. So now the business was damn good in the south region of India. If the business is damn good in one region, as a higher management, we plan to start up our business in other regions as well. Okay, so now I have planned to start up my business in other region. Let us assume that I plan to start up my business in north region because the south region the business was okay for infrastructure done. It will take some more time, and to market myself, it is again really going to take a lot of time, and and it is you know time taking process and investment is high. So a lot of things we have here. So that was the reason I have acquired an existing business in the north region. So acquiring means already existing business, I have just acquired it. So from the day one itself, I can you know start my business. I can improve my business or you know, the existing customers I'll have. So that was the reason I have acquired a business in the north region. So you know it also deals with FMCG, fast moving consumer goods. So here I'm going with you know database MySQL. So the same way, I have acquired a business in other two regions, you know, east and west regions of um, uh, you know India. So one one region it, they were using you know Excel as their data source to capture all the data, business data. So the other uh, region they were going with a Sybase database to capture all the data. Now my entire data, uh, you know. My entire business was across uh, four regions, south, north, east, and west. And the entire organization data was uh, in four different databases, Oracle, MySQL, Excel, and Sybase. Let us say if I want to, uh, as a higher manager, if I, need, if I want to improve my business, 
I need to uh, you know make some decisions on my business. How should I make my decisions on the business? Means I need to analyze the actual data or I need to analyze the historical data based on the analysis and historical data. If I can make a decision, so which is going to be a perfect decision so that I can improve my business. So that was the reason. Uh, now I need to analyze my entire uh, India data. If I need to analyze my entire data, but here the databases were different. Let's say, uh, uh, for example, I just want to know top 10 products sales was good across India. And 10 product sales was bad across India, not one particular region. So if I need this information, uh, you know, what should I do now here? So to get data, you know, from all the region, different databases, I need top 10 uh, uh, what we call top 10 products across India. Any guess or any idea how to get all the uh, data across uh, across the country? I mean, four different databases. I need to get data from four different databases and I need to see that top 10 products and you know sales which was bad for 10 different products. Any idea or any guess? We must uh, deploy a database uh, which is basically agnostic uh, to all of these databases. I mean, we can uh, get get the data from all these databases, and okay. then uh, yes, Sailor. As Sailor said, what we can do is uh, changing into a single database system is one of the best options. Like, so you take any of the database like Oracle. All these three sources can be converted to Oracle, or all these three can be converted to MySQL. So are the other three into Sybase, or these three into Excel, okay. So changing into one of the uh, database uh, source, like changing into a single database system, is one of the. Options. So what happens if I do that? Changing into a single database system means I need to purchase the softwares for the other regions as well as, and I need to recruit resources as well as, and it will really take lot of time, uh, you know, to convert into the other source. Okay, so time taking, cost wise high. And software purchasing, resource recruiting, lot of risks in this uh, you know option. Okay, so on the existing system would be changed again. So all these three areas, the existing system completely would be keep on changing. We have an alternate option without doing anything, like without disturbing the existing system. Okay, so no need to change all these uh, you know softwares, no need to retrieve resources without doing all this stuff. We have a provision here. Okay. So what we can do, we can we can uh, you know uh, mix up all the data, or we can get into one single source. So how does that means? Yeah. So now let us have a look here. You can see I have four different databases. Like one is Oracle, Excel, MySQL, Sybase from four different data sources. Every day-to-day -day transactions, if you go for any store, they'll just punch in the product. Automatically, bill will be generated. So all these data would be stored in the sources okay different sources like all these sources the existing system i'll not disturb the existing system daily or uh, weekly or quarterly or monthly uh, you know uh, uh, yearly uh, daily uh, weekly monthly quarterly or yearly what i'll do is based on my business requirement from these four different uh, sources i'll extract the entire data into the transformations area from four different systems and sources, I'll extract the entire data into the transformations. So in the transformations, what I'll do here is I'll convert uh, you know, the unstructured data to structured data, like the inconsistency data to consistent. Let me uh, share you another example. Let us say in the Oracle database, uh, basically while you know filling the data, we'll have customer gender. So you know whether it may be male, female, uh, we need to fill up something. So here, the naming conventions for male and female in Oracle, I'm using M and F. Let us say if we go back to Excel, here I'm using uh, something quite different, like 0, 1. So the other area in MySQL, I'm using M, A, and F, E. In Sybase, I'm using 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2. So for a single you know, customer gender, the naming conventions was quite different in all the source systems. If I, if I you know, uh, extract data into the transformations, Try to get uh, top 10 customers across the you know country who purchase for you know highest value. Then the customer uh, you know gender might differ. One might be a M, one might be a one, one might be something M A zero zero one. Different uh, stuff will get it here. So that was the reason 
here in the transformations what we do is mm, we will apply some business logic after extracting the entire data into the transformations I will apply a logic whatever it might be a customer gender if it may be a 0 1 it may be MF or MAFE or 0 0 1 0 0 2 convert that into male and female so all the data inconsistency data in the transformation with the help of a business logic I will convert into male and female so now the data was uh, consistent then I load the entire data into a data warehouse okay so data warehouse is also a database but it will have huge amount of space to store the data so here what I am doing I am not disturbing the existing system okay existing system will remain same as every day once the business is done then I will extract the data in the transformations I will apply some business logics once if the data was you know structured then I load the entire data into the data warehouse so this is something called as extraction transformation loading so these databases you can see Oracle Excel all these databases are called as OLTP databases OLTP means online transactional processing so day to day transactional data would be stored in all these sources whereas coming to this data warehouse so this is called as a OLAP OLAP online analytical processing so now let me ask you a question if my business is 10 years old where would be my 10 years of data available was it available in the OLTP systems or was it available in the data warehouse it all depends on where you store the data so initially transactional data would be stored in the, uh, this data warehouse so basically my question was where would be my 10 years of data means it's not in the OLTP so OLTP databases consist of only you know recently you know data like it might be a month max of six months to one year data would be holded in the OLTP all the historical data would be always tight away will be stored in the data warehouse the entire data was you know the, all the historical data was available in the data warehouse it's a, it's a 20 years old so the entire 20 years of data would be st stored in the warehouse only okay the after structured we'll be storing it here so now this process like extraction transformation loading uh, yes extraction transformation loading uh, this process to complete this entire process we have some couple of tools available in the market okay so they are you can uh, see uh, these tools are Informatica, Data Stage, Abnicio, SSIS, I mean, all these are ETL tools. We'll call this as an ETL tools. Informatica, Data Stage, Abnicio, SSIS. We also have open source tools, uh, Pentaho. So for this entire you know process to achieve, we'll be going with the tools. Okay, so once with the help of any tool, if we make the entire unstructured data to structured and the entire data is available in the data warehouse. So finally, what is uh, required for the end user? for end user for decision making he need to analyze the actual data based on the analysis and actual data he can make a decision now the entire data was available in the data warehouse data warehouse is also again a database so here uh, you know database means how do we uh, get data from a database if I want to insert or if I want to retrieve I need to use structured query language it can only understand structured query language other thing it cannot understand so to extract data from this data warehouse for analysis purpose means here we have two options so one is I can go ahead with the business intelligence tools the other option is I can straight away write SQL query and I can retrieve data from the database data warehouse even BI tool also has to write SQL query and it has to extract from the data warehouse or manually also we need to write query and we need to extract so both the ways we can extract it but if I go with the business intelligence tools it is costlier but if I go with the manual written queries I can recruit one or two guys and I can ask them to retrieve data from the data it is very cheaper but still believe me but still companies are not going with the manual written query uh, okay so but the companies are really not going from the uh, you know manual manual said they are going with the business intelligence tools why any idea or any guess to be able to be able to make the decisions quickly on the go See, if you pull the data manually using the SQL or other 
resources, then you would take time at length, so time consuming. Especially if you, you would like to visualize the data or to make certain decisions, then you need to have a tool where you can just see it or image it in a more presentable manner. So even anywhere, even Excel also is, is even tool also, is, it also. Here, if you go with uh, you know uh, manual written query, or if you go with you know BA tool, uh, try to understand. If I just extract by rating query, you'll get a tabular format data. But whereas if I go with the business intelligence tool, I can view the same data in two-dimensional, three-dimensional dashboarding, score coding, analytics. The different ways we can analyze this data. So that is what the biggest advantage here, and security plays a vital role in the organizations. So here, if I go with the BA tools, it's completely secure. You know, if higher management can see the entire data, but something sales said, he can see only his related data only. Like security-wise, visualization-wise, performance-wise, it also BA tools plays a vital role. And you know, accuracy-wise, if it is a manual query, something you did a mistake, entire business will spoil. But whereas if I go with the report before you know, moving into the production, we'll be doing lot of uh, you know testings and we'll be once if it is you know successfully perfect then only we'll move into the production so the visualization wise performance wise security wise accuracy wise so always you know ba tools are in the top position that was the reason organizations are really behind this uh, you know business intelligence tools so now uh, if i go with uh, okay uh, business intelligence tools. Let us look into the BA tools uh, in the market. Last, you know, 12, 13 years before, you can see in the market, Cognos and business objects were really rocking in the market. So, in the last six years, five, six years, you can see OBA and MSBA is also available in the market. Cognos means IBM is the owner. Business objects, SAP is the owner. OBA means Oracle. MSBA means Microsoft Business Intelligence. So, all these tools were in the rocking in the market. But recently, an evolution has been occurred in the market, and few tools came into the picture. So, among them, you can see, uh, I can say rather than BA tools, I can tell this BA plus VA tools. BA means business intelligence, VA means visual analytics. So, you can see Tableau, ClickView, Portfire. So, these are really rocking in the market because they are BA tools, but extra visualization VA is available here. So, so these are all some, you know. Uh, BA tools which are available in the market. Now let us see uh, a brief history of Tableau and let us discuss how Tableau was quite different with other BA tools. So how Tableau was quite different with other BA tools. So before that Tableau was started by, you know, it started in 2003, uh, Chris Tolt and Christian Chabot. So and now it was, you know, public listed and each and every year, why why you can see the growth, growth rate was really good. Okay, so and the latest version was 9.3, and even in the Gartner review also, Tableau was standing in the first position among all the business intelligence tools. Okay, so let us discuss in detail first how Tableau is quite different from other tools. Then I'll show you all the Gartner review and everything here. Okay, so Tableau was an in-memory tool. In-memory, what what was this in-memory? So let me just share you something about in-memory. All business intelligence tools are three-tier architecture. All the business intelligence tools are three-tier architecture. What is this three-tier? Means nothing but web layer, application layer, and data layer. Web means Internet Explorer. So everyone has to run the report in the internet. Okay, so application server will help us to get the data and everything from the data layer. So three layers. Okay, web layer, application layer, data layer. In the web layer, we'll have web server application layer will have application application server okay here i have a data layer a data server so what happens you know let's say if an end user run a report you take any of the traditional tool okay you take any of the traditional tool if you run a report so it was moved to the web server. User run a report here. The entire physical information would be moved. I mean, 
uh, into the web server because he was in the web itself. So, so user one that information completely would be available in the web server, okay, in the form of XML from web server to the application server. Gateway will carry that information, okay. So, gateway will carry that information. Gateway will carry the entire information from web server to the application server. As you know that data server means database. So database doesn't understand any anything. It can only understand structured query language. So who is going to write that structured query language means the entire you know web server, the application, whatever XML code was been moved into the application server with the help of gateway. So here what application server will do is it will convert the entire, it will convert complete uh, you know physical to SQL query, convert to SQL query. The entire physical query to SQL query application server will convert that SQL query would be sent to the data ser server, I mean our data layer. So this application server is going to play a vital role here. So it is going to con you know send that entire SQL query to the data layer or uh, data server. So here it is going to based on the query it is going to give the data to the next layer to the application server. Before sending data again it will authenticate whether the requested person is having authorization or not. Once if he is having authorization the entire data would be sent to the application server. Then from application server again it would be moved to the web server. From web server to end user it is going to share it. So this is what happens in all the business intelligence tools. You take any of the business intelligence tool this is what happened. It may be a Cognos, it may be a business object, MSBA, you take any different tool. So this is what happens over there. So here if you can see three layers, web layer, application layer. Let us say 10 users run the same report. 10 times it has to process the same thing. A single report was run by 10 users. So 10 times it will follow the same. So that is what happens in the traditional business intelligence tool. So what happens in the tableau? What is this in-memory concept? So even here also we'll have the same, uh, you know, thing, three layers only. Here also the same stuff. Same thing, whatever happens in the traditional, here also it happens the same thing. But what happens here is, so after extracting the data into the server, so the entire data will not be directly share it share to the end user. After extracting data from the server, um, from the database, the entire data was not, uh, you know, directly sharing it to the user. It is just, see, let's say if end user run a report, it will hit this and it will go to the next layer, okay. So after extracting, again the data would be, uh, you know, uh, stored in the RAM, the Tableau server RAM. After extracting the data, the same procedure, whatever we have done in the traditional, the same process will done, but after extracting data, so here if you can observe directly web server to the user, it is sharing. But here it is not directly sharing it to the end user. It is just showing the entire data in the RAM, the Tableau server RAM. From RAM, it is just sharing it to the end user. So what happens in the RAM? You know, RAM is very faster. You can do all the calculations in the fly. So now this user is accessing the same report. Let us say other user want to access the same report. Okay, other two users. Now the, the process is not going to get repeated here. So from the RAM itself directly, okay, so they can access the data. From the RAM itself, you know, they can access the data. And the other most important in the Tableau was, even in the OBA also it is having the same facility, but how it is different with OBA means once after extracting data into the RAM, all the calculations can be done in the RAM and the file itself. So now let us say this user accessing the same report in the bar chart and he can see that in the line chart, he can see something in the pie chart. Data was same but the visualization was changing. Data was same but the visualization, the representation, the present presentation can be changed by the customers. So how means with the help of which key here, with the help of so which key visualization query language. So Tableau is having its own query language. Front end if user let us say click on something, it is directly hitting the RAM, it can understand that query and it again fetch the data 
and images would be rendered and displayed in the front. So this is called as an in-memory. So this is uh, where you know Tableau is quite different with other BA2. Once if you know everyone closes the report, the entire data would be washed out from the RAM. So RAM is a temporary, right? So again, if the user open a report, it hits the first time database, it hits the data, it gets the data and store in the RAM. If everyone close the report, automatically data data will be washed out from the RAM. So what here, guys? Uh, hi Raj, this is Manbir. I have yeah, a few okay. questions. Uh, okay, so uh, so if multiple users are accessing different data, mm. and in a large organization, say I have 50 uh, users who are simultaneously accessing the data, mm. so the data calls from all the 50 users will be stored in RAM yes. until yes. unless they close their reports, right? Yes, if it is a 50 users, 50 reports, not the users. Like let's say 50 users, 50 different reports means. Uh, yes, all the 50 reports data has to be in the RAM. So, uh, are there any performance impacts? Means uh, because each user is accessing different data. No so, is problem. there any hardware? Um... Four terabyte of RAM is also available in the market. So, huge amount of data, four terabyte means. I mean, we can go ahead with the cluster mode. In the sense, we can have multiple computers connected. Let's say one server was down, automatically another server would be up. Same way, one server RAM is completed, the other server RAM would be used. So always, so when you say, same, we know that we go with a distributed environment. So when you say cluster, you mean the Tableau uh, application. The yes. Tableau application is installed, and uh, okay, and they are synchronized. Yes, correct. Okay, all the servers. I mean, web servers, I'll have two, three web servers. I'll have three, four application servers. I'll have two, three data servers. So in the real-time environment, if let us say one web server was failed, the entire would be stopped, right? So that was the reason we will be having multiple servers. So even though so, if one server is down, automatically another server will take care of the work. Uh, so this, this uh, cluster is between the application on two different machines or it's, or it's in the web server? It depends. In, the, in a single machine, I can have two, three web servers or three, four application servers, data servers. If I want to install, depends on the size of the you know the organization data size. If I want, you know, I can install in one server, uh, one web server, in another server, I can go ahead with the other web. The Tableau application is installed on the web server or the application server? Yes, server would be, yes. See, the application Tableau server means it has to be done in three servers. I mean, three means components. These are web server, application server, data server. We need to configure it. They're all uh -huh. separate three components. Web server means, you know, uh, Apache Tomcat server, all these comes. Ta application server means, again, Tableau server. Data layer server means our content store. So, yeah, so when, when I start the installation, uh, where do I start? I start with the data server, the application server, or web server. For example, I uh, web, server, blue web server, application, one by one, one by one. So by default, what happens in the Tableau server if you start installing? By default, it will ask you, you know, to configure it. You can install in one machine, and you can add in another machine. You can divide, you can partition it. How many web servers? How many applications are it? Will clearly asks us. So how many which SQL servers we need? How many background servers we need? So there we need to, uh, you know, clearly partition that. Because I'm just trying to understand the purpose of. Of these uh, means uh, application server, the web server, or okay. the data Don't server. Worry, we'll, we'll discuss in detail in the you know architecture session. We'll discuss detail okay. in that. You will get an idea. Okay, so let me just complete all this stuff. Then I'll give you some time. For all these questions. Okay. Right. So this is what in-memory tool. In-memory, uh, you know, this is probably quite different with all other business. So, I mean, this is what the major advantage, how Tableau is different from other tools. And, you know, next advantage was performance-wise, it is very faster. So, how it is faster, performance-wise? So, performance-wise, faster means in Tableau, uh, we have a separate connectors. In Tableau, we have separate connectors in the architecture, whereas other business intelligence tools don't have that connector. Let us say if I want to connect to a... Uh, database I have here you can see in the Tableau architecture so if I want to connect to a database I can connect through SQL connector 
if I want to connect to cubes, I can connect through MDX connector. So other sources I want to connect fast data engine, warehouse or anything you know how to fast data. So in Tableau, that is what a very big advantage here. So we have separate connectors. So that was the reason it is already proved ten times faster than when compared to other business intelligence tools because separate connectors always it helps us a lot to connect. Basically, we'll be you know. Other tools are having, uh, we don't have a, you know, separate connectors. So this is what the advantage. So that was the reason performance wise it is already uh, proven uh, 10 times faster than the other business intelligence tool. And user driven. So what is this user driven means? Uh, you know, as I said, uh, a same report can be accessed by different users and they can view in different uh, visualizations. Different visualization. And you know, customer can uh, do all the ad hack reporting, and GUI is, was good. So that was the reason it is completely an user driven tool. So basically, you take any other business intelligence tool as a developer. If I develop a bar chart and given it to the customer, even for 10 years also, he has to run the same stuff. He can only see a bar chart. If you want to change that report, you need to write a ticket, and you know, IT team will take again one or two months and will be building and will be giving it to the customer. So that is what happens in all other business intelligence tools. But whereas coming to the Tableau, you know, in fraction of seconds, customer can change the visualization without, uh, uh, you know, help from the technical team. So that is also a major advantage here. So that was the reason we'll call this as an user-driven tool. Same way, you know, cost-effective. What is this cost-effective? So cost-effective means, let us say, example, I have ten reports. Okay, so ten reports. Uh, I w I need to maintain ten years. Okay, the cost is something one lakh dollars because every year I need to uh, purchase the renewal the license and I need to maintain supporting. So all that was the reason it is uh, you know one lakh dollars. So the same thing if I go with the Tableau. Okay, if I go with the Tableau, uh, you know the cost of the licenses would be for ten years. Not don't take for one year or six months something like that. It would be less than 50% of the cost what I have been invested on the traditional tools. Less than 50% of the cost what I have been invested on the other traditional tools. So it's very cheaper and you know, so easily any company can uh, afford these prices. Okay. So these are all some major advantages in the Tableau. That was the reason uh, last four quarters, last four quarters, you, if you can see in the Google, you can uh, type Tableau Gartner review. Gartner is a very big organization. It will rate all the tools. So out of all the business intelligence tools, last four uh, years you can see Tableau was really standing in the first position. Okay, Tableau was standing in the first position. Let me just uh, show you a Gartner review as well as. You can see 2015, 16, whatever you want. You can see even 16 also. Recently it has been released. Uh, every February they will give us rating. You can see, you can also go through this. You can see in the leader squadron, Tableau was really starting in the standing in the first position. You can see ClickView, Microsoft means MSBI, MicroStrategy, Oracle, OBIE, IBM Cognos, SAP Business Objects. So, so these are all the you know. Uh, statistics and they have clearly justified here. I cannot say that you know uh, so and so was good and this is bad. Uh, they need to justify or else the other companies will sue. These are all market leaders Microsoft, SAP, Oracle, IBM, all these are you know, market leaders. Uh, they'll sue immediately the Gartner's company. So they have given a clear justification on this. So clear justification. You can also go through the site why it is quite different and how the sales was really good for Tableau. You can also see the gap here. So same way, this is done in 2015 February. Uh, you can also see 2016 as well as you can see as of February 2016. Okay, you can see Tableau, a click view, Microsoft. So all other uh, reporting tools you can see it here. So IBM, Clear Story Data. So all this you can see a uh, SAS, SAP Business Objects. So recently February 2016, the Gartner. Okay, so this is uh, these are all the different you know advantages where a tableau is having. So that was the reason it was standing in the 
top position. So now let us discuss uh, the components of Tableau. Okay, so what are all the different components we have here? So we have basically five components: Tableau Desktop, Tableau Server, Tableau Reader, Tableau Public, Tableau Online. So five components we have. So Tableau Desktop and Tableau Server are main important thing. Okay, so Tableau Desktop it is mainly used. It is a window-based tool. Tableau Desktop is a window-based tool. It is mainly used for modeling and reporting purpose. The purpose of Tableau Desktop is modeling and reporting purpose. So initially, we will be having you know 14 days uh, license uh, on, on that. And Tableau Desktop can be installed only on uh, Windows operating system and Mac operating system. Others it will not support. Okay. And uh, software-wise, we have Tableau Desktop in the Tableau Desktop Tableau Personal, Tableau Professional. So Tableau Personal is something triple nine dollars. And professional is one triple nine dollar. Then we can publish to the server. So all the facilities will be having in the Tableau uh, professional um, in Tableau desktop. So same way Tableau server, it is also a fourteen days license. And mainly the purpose of Tableau server is to uh, share the reports to the end user and manage the user customer. Use report. Customers will use the reports from the Tableau server itself. They will access from the Tableau server itself. Okay, they can access the reports, and you know we can manage it. All the administrative activities will be done in the Tableau server. So these two topics, Tableau Desktop and Tableau Server, will cover three roles: developer role, architect role, administrator role. Administrator means completely it's Tableau server, modeling and you know architect and report development uh, kind of stuff will be done in the desktop itself. So as a part of this course, we will be covering this Tableau desktop and server completely. Okay. So reader is a free component, public is a free component. Okay. Reader means where you, if you have data, you can just generate a small report and you can share it to some other person. He should also ha have this uh, Tableau reader installed in his machine. But very limited option. Public means how the server works, the same way public will work. That report you can publish into the public. Anyone can access it. So these two are free components where companies are not going to, you know, use these free components. With very limited options. Right? So the same desktop and server for that they have given reader and public. So Tableau Online. If the entire data was in the cloud, with the help of Tableau Online, we can uh, access the report from the cloud. So that is what is Tableau. So this is also 14 days uh, license. Okay. After that, we need to get a key. Okay, so this is how uh, Tableau is quite different with other uh, business intelligence tools uh, and the components of Tableau. Now let me just show you the tool uh, as you guys are asking. So how it works? What is this visualization? So, okay, so let me answer all of your questions with this, uh, you know, practical session. You you will get some understanding. So what is this visualization? Visualization and stuff. So this is what Tableau desktop. As you know, Tableau is a just a reporting tool. It will not hold any data or something. We'll be just connecting to a source and source and getting the data and representing in the different uh, visualizations. So now this is what Tableau desktop. So here, let me just use this sample superstore English. Okay. So this is what a source uh, I'm just using. So this is what Tableau, you know, desktop window. Okay, so this is what Tableau desktop window. So now let me just generate a simple report and ask you some questions. So I have, I have continent, and I have sales. So now I'll ask you a question: uh, What is the third highest continent based on the sales? You can post your questions. You can chart your questions. I'll. Uh, you know, discuss in detail one by one. Okay, whatever questions you have, please, uh, you know, post here in the chat window. You can post it. So I'll discuss one by one. Okay. So now, what is the uh, third highest means? So I got only one reply. So that was South America. Okay. So now, what I'll do in the Tableau is the same thing. Uh, 
I just click on this. Now if I click on this, now which one is comfortable? So see this is what visualization. So this is what a visualization. Okay, so if I just click on here, you can see representation. So data was seen. So even here also the data was same and here also same. The third highest continent means it's South America. But here it is just representing like this and here it is representing like this. So which one is better for decision making means this is what better for decision making. So this is what visualization. One customer can see the same data in this. Other customer can see this. This is what a visualization. And he now, uh, yeah, if I, let's say if I click on this, uh, packet bubbles. So who is going to, uh, if I click it here, now what VigiKL will do is visualization query language. That is Tableau's own query language. If I just click here, it can understand the request. That request will be taken and it hits the RAM. It gets the data along with the images and display it here. If I don't have any, uh, you know, query in between this, if I just click it here, how it is going to understand. But here in Tableau, we have a visualization query language that is like how we have C, C++ language the same way. It is its internal query language. Based on this click, it can understand the entire request and it is going to hit the source and it is going to get the data from the RAM. So that, that is what the advantage I mean, of which. And this is what called as a visualization. More benefits like if I drag, as you know, this is a tool, right? So I mean, this is built, again, built in the .NET and Java. Now if I drag continent into the color, you can see all the continents were encoded with a different color. If I want to see the values, you just click on this ABC. You can see all the value. If I want to swap rows and columns, click it. Because tool, it's a tool already, uh, you know, all this has been built in the, uh, completely in the language. So while writing uh, each and every option while building, they have, uh, they have struggled and now the tool was available in the market. You need to just click it. And like this, and if you want to see something different, so like right click, so all facilities you'll have. So something different like this. Uh, and if I want to filter something data, you can just click on quick filters. So more visualization. You can create another sheets and you can publish it. So where customer can interact with all these dashboards and he can make some decisions on their business. Okay, so without you know uh, historical data, if I make a decision, it's going to be wrong, and the entire business will collapse. So that was the reason each and every organization should need uh, you know their historical data. So based on that data only, if they can make a decision which is going to help them uh, to improve their business. So uh, this data server, uh, data server is, is the location where my source information just uh, like uh, Excel files or yes. uh, SQL server or Oracle database, right? Which means correct. it can change. Correct. correct. Okay. So we will be just from Tableau, we will be straight away connecting and we will be just getting the data and we will be, uh, you know, generating the report. For any data source, we can connect from here. So it's very comfortable and easy. Uh, you can, uh, let me okay. show you. If I click on data source, now you can see all the data sources which are available here. You can see, you know, Tableau, Server, Actarian, Amazon, Redshift, all the data, Cloudera, Hadoop, you know, Access Solutions, Google Analytics, Google BigQuery, direct plugins we have here. So as this is a tool, so no connecting uh, issues like that. Hartenworks, Hadoop, Hive, you know, MySQL, anything, just server name, username, passwords. There is no credentials, it will be connected. It should be in the same network. So, Salesforce, so in the SAP, HANA, yeah. So in the beginning yes. you mentioned uh, uh, this um, uh, Tableau has its own connectors, right? That yes, means, yes. So these connectors are means available within the application or we have to install them separately? No, no, no. It's by default we'll get that with the installation itself. No need of separate okay. installation. So by default it okay. would be installed to fetch the data. To fetch the data okay. it will use the connectors and here direct plugins they have given. I mean to okay. connect to any source you can just click it, we can connect. The Informatica is not a database to connect. Informatica is not a data source. It is again a tool, ETL tool. So where you do, 
again you have to do it in the database only. So the database obviously we can connect correctly. So whatever ETL transactions you do and after that you'd be storing in a database. Again you can connect to that data. Okay. And is there any limitation with Tableau to just connect uh, with the databases within the same domain or even uh, the databases can be in different domains as well? Like we, in no limitations on the databases because uh, let me tell you one more uh, important point here. Uh, uh, no limitations. Why? Because uh, if you say business intelligence tool, any BA tool, uh, you know, if you say BA tool, it has to connect to any database. Even uh, if I go, if I prepare, a, if I create a new da uh, database, as per the standards, we can also connect to that data. So as uh, all the BA tools, there are some set of uh, standards in the business intelligence. If any tool made that standard, then it is said to be a BA. So all you know, Cognos, business objects, all these are you know business intelligence tools, even Tableau. Also. So for any database, we can even we can create our own database as per the standard. It has to support. So that was the reason we have ODBC connectivity and all this. Might be there will be some issues or some time plugins or something. If we can raise a ticket to the Tableau, so they can help us out in that. You can see here all the databases, maximum majority of the database would be you can able to see. Directly click it, connect to the source, get the data, do visualization. So, uh, Hello sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Sir, yes. But compared to SQL, for this is the visual query language. Are you writing any code? Yes, good question. Uh, here we don't need to write any kind of queries, but the basic functionalities is important. So basic, uh, you know, uh, let's say we can write sometimes customized SQL if you want to write. We can, some situations, it demands we have to write. And functions, calculations are mandatory. You should be strong with all the, uh, all the functions. These are different functions, everything you should be aware of that. Each and everything I'm, I'm going to cover it. If then I'll all these things. SQL queries yeah. like stored processors and all this stuff, I don't think so. You, you need no need to write. Normal functions, normal functions, you should be strong with. No VGQL means like SQL here, you no need to write, uh, you know, VGQL queries. It's not required. And uh, let me complete few more things. As a part of this course, you know, I was just going to cover you a few things. Tableau desktop. Okay, Tableau server to crack an interview, so it is mandatory. So Tableau desktop and Tableau server is mandatory, which covers three roles: developer, architect, administrator. So apart from this, uh, it is mandatory to have database because uh, interview point of view, they might ask you database, uh, which I'm going to provide you. Thirty sessions, uh, okay, recording sessions. I'll help you out with these thirty sessions. Desktop and server completely I'll be going to help you out uh, in the Tableau desktop and Tableau server. Database skills as well as data warehousing concepts is also important because interview point of time, if the interviewer is really not good in the uh, Tableau, he might ask you database questions and data warehousing concepts. So that I'm going to cover it. So and also apart from this, uh, I'm going to help you about the process. Process is really very important. Even though if you are technically strong and if you are not process oriented, interviewer is not going to, you know, select. So what is this process means? Even though if you learn Tableau, the project you need to work, maybe you have to fit into the uh, development or support or it might be sometimes on the, okay, migrate. So the development means it would be quite different. Uh, out of your 100% of our effort, 30% of your time has to spend in the meetings. 30% of your time you need to do a lot of documentation, and 30% technical work, ticket rising, approvals, lot of uh, things process is mandatory. And in the second round, manager round, they're 100%, they'll ask you a question, what exactly was your role and responsibility and how you have been fulfilled and, you know, domain knowledge, all these are important. So that I'm going to cover it. And resume preparation plays a, uh, you know, vital role. So that I'll be taking care of, resume preparation. So I, I'm not going to prepare your resume. So I'll completely guide you how to prepare your own resume. Most of the resumes I have noticed, they'll put up the development project and the complete roles would be supported. 
So, so that I'm going to cover up in the resume preparations, and I'm going to share you uh, all the FAQs, FAQs which are uh, max. We have around 150 questions, so where you can just go through that. Uh, you know, I'll be sharing these FAQs. Also, I'll be sharing you a material, a book uh, which has been written by me, so which should be around 600 pages with the screenshots. Don't worry. So, I'll be sharing you this book as well as. So, you know, uh, where you can just go through all the scenarios, examples and everything. So, these are all the stuff what I'm going to cover up in the going forward uh, sessions. Also, I, you can see my course content where it is available. So, you can see all the topics, you can just go through the course content. Okay, so I can help you out, uh, uh, you know, uh, with some technical recordings as well as demo recording and as well as technical record okay so two technical uh, recordings you can just go through the technical recordings and this demo recording so you can you know uh, 